Hey, what's up guys? Chris Journey here for Chris Gar. Welcome to 2020. Pretty excited about this one because this video is gonna compile essentially 10 of my favorite VFX that you can achieve inside of After Effects and that can really further your story and, and allow you to create so much more with just knowing a few basic things in, in After Effects. Uh, things like keying, rotoscoping, all this stuff, but I just wanna show you how all of those basics and some a little bit more advanced things can be applied in different scenarios for different types of effects. And hopefully in this list, you'll be inspired and, and learn how to do some of them and can even use them for your own projects, music videos, short films, all that sort of stuff. So with that being said, let's jump in and let's actually take a look at the top 10 VFX that you can do right inside of After Effects. Pretty excited because this list also doesn't include any plugins. It's literally what you can do just with After Effects and some minor creative work and, and thinking outside the box. And you can really get some pretty amazing results and you can sort of see how you can start to apply the same things but use in different ways. And it just leaves so much room that it, your only limit really is your imagination and how you use these tools. Starting off at number one, I love the falling from the sky or ceiling or wherever effect. From superhero movies to trying to mimic this effect myself in high school falling from the sky is one of the effects i'll probably keep sneaking into the videos whenever i can this effect is pretty simple and usually consists of a few simple components a clean plate an animated freeze frame of the person landing from a jump and a way to blend it all into one motion Selecting a frame before the feet touch the ground is actually helpful to make the impact animation easier as you have full control of the speed while you're in the air. Masking one frame can be enough, but if you have longer drops or a wider shot, I usually rotoscope a few frames to include more real movements of the limbs and head. If this isn't an option because your footage is too short, you can always animate the freeze frame with a puppet tool and add points in each joint and keyframe and animation that fits the landing. And I also find useful to animate from the landing in reverse to make sure that the animation will match with the impact. And there you go, a simple effect that can be taken in many ways to suit your shot. Next at number two is the secret sauce that has saved me on so many occasions when I just didn't have enough lighting gear or permits or whatever the situation was for me to not get a certain look on set. To find out, sign up for my email list right here. <laughs> I'm just joking, I'm joking. You don't have to do that. That's actually really annoying. I hate when people do that. My secret sauce when I feel a little bit limited on set and I can't get the look or all those details that I want, uh, you know, there's still a side that can really save you in post. And I've showed this a few times on this channel. I even went live uh, for three days with Adobe, just kind of like showcasing this technique. And it's a lot of fun. It's kind of painful sometimes to, to do it, but essentially when you get it right, you can relight an entire scene. And if my summary right now isn't detailed enough, you can always reference to those videos that I made a while back with Adobe and also some on my channel, and that will take you step by step. But the basic idea is this. You have a background, you have roto elements, and then you have some foreground elements. And by separating everything out like this, in conjunction with either 2D or 3D tracking, you can add color solids or adjustment layers that stick to certain parts of your scene. And this allows you to darken an area that you couldn't maybe flag on set perhaps, or create shafts of light and detail that just wasn't there on the day of shooting. These subtle and time-consuming nuances are what can really elevate your cinematography when you're on a pinch. And by the way, the email list is real and I email for discounts and free assets and nothing else. So it's not spam or anything like that. So if you want, you can actually sign up for that and get free stuff. Or if you want to skip that altogether and get to the point and buy my products and support me in that way, then feel free to do that or both. Next at number three is fake double exposure effects. Now playing with shadows and light is one of my favorite things to do, but when you can add another layer of video within that, that's when you can make some really cool graphics and visuals. This is a music video I did for Yellow Dog Conspiracy, a great band and great music. You should definitely check them out. And here we see that the themes of the video are actually represented visually. And this is kind of the feeling of a need to escape to a better emotional place and to find peace and to fill the void with beauty. And that's what the effect is trying to show. And now this can be done by just using blending modes and kind of overlaying two videos on top of each other, but that only works if you have a very specific type of lighting and enough shadow and, and just a really high contrast look. And sometimes if you want something very specific, you can always mask the parts that you want to show and place them where you want for more control. And this can also be used to force a double exposure effect when the lighting doesn't really allow for it. So in this shot, for example, I had to darken the side of his face on the right to allow the memories to pass through. 
And because the original footage was pretty evenly lit and flat, there wasn't really room for that double exposure effect to happen. So by adding a black solid in that side of the face, I was able to actually kind of force it in. So this effect, like many others I show, uh, work best when they are used to push the story forward. Now, moving on to number four is keying because it allows you to do so much story-wise and it's just like one of the first effects that probably people look for. And uh, it is tricky and the resolution of your camera and file compression, unfortunately, can set some uh, scenes at a disadvantage. But we've talked about ways to get around that and, and a bunch of different other lighting techniques uh, to, to make it a little bit easier. But I did stumble upon a really new technique that, at least it's new for me, that uses a combination of keying, luma mats, tracking, and a bunch of masking to get some really clean results no matter what your shooting scenario and what your footage looks like. Because in one of the recent music videos that I did, I actually had such a hard time keying this. It was really, really painful and I could not get it right. There was just too much spill on the green screen, it was just a mess. This paper behind the window idea just didn't work out as well as I thought it did. So I had to kind of develop a new kind of way to work around that. And, uh, and it's a process that I'm gonna show in a lot more detail in an upcoming tutorial, hopefully. All right, let's switch it back and let's go back to some action type of VFX. Even as a kid, when I learned the basics of After Effects, this is like one of the first effects that I just jumped on. And that's just shooting people, shooting yourself, muzzle flashes, blood hits. I mean, that's just what kids do. I'm gonna kill both of you. Dude, what the hell? You have terrible aim. Oh my god, but we're talking about it now and this is how you create more realistic muzzle flashes that actually look good Make sure that you're using the right assets and in the right way For example when you use a muzzle flash that is tracked on the tip of the gun Make sure that the smoke puff of gas that follows that muzzle flash is sticking to the camera motion of the scene and not to the actual tip of the gun just like the flashes Next is the fake light or shadows created by the muzzle flash. So you can create this on the actual gun itself, on any shiny parts of the metal, or even on the face and wardrobe of the person shooting it. You can also create even a fake shadow behind a person based on the direction of where the gun is pointed at. Now this can get pretty advanced, but it really pays off to take care of these details and, and, and really bring in the environment within this effect. Finally, add the shells being ejected by animating them by hand or by using a particle system with the bullet casing as a sprite. Now at number six, there is a recent uh, set of VFX that I tried out just for some videos I did last year. Atmosphere effects are a cool layer that you can add to your footage and can be used to even fake dust storms and other calamities, which is what I did in a series of videos I shot in the Nevada desert. And I wish I had more time to polish some of these effects. I was dealing with some pretty tight deadlines that time, which didn't really leave me a lot of time for tweaking stuff. But either way, I'm still happy with the end result and it was a ton of fun shooting and compositing this. For this one, I used dust elements from Production Crate and it made these effects a lot easier instead of having to create all these dust assets from scratch and simulate simulating a whole dust storm. So shout out to them and the link is also in the description. For this, again, tracking in as much detail into your scene will create more interaction with the effect and the real world. So you can see this here with the shingles on the roof and that, that really helps sell the, just the momentum and the force of the storm approaching. Another big giveaway that something is fake is bad lighting. So try to match the direction of light of the assets that you're using with the sun or any other sources that are in your scene. You can also create color and level adjustments by creating copies of the assets and masking the part you want to change to match the direction of shadows or light. The biggest other thing is parallax and you can get that by camera tracking your scene. This will solve your scene with 3D points that you can use to create a virtual camera and to create different tracking points in your scene. This way you can actually position different layers in 3D space of atmosphere, dust, debris or whatever else into specific parts of your scene. Now, Seven is a really specific effect, but it's just not really well known. And it's right inside of After Effects, and it's literally just drag and drop, and you can get some really cool visuals. That is the kaleidoscopic effect. And I know, again, it's very specific because it creates this really trippy array look 
and, and you can really mirror things in a weird, uh, trippy way, but it's very easy to do. And if you are making a trippy music video or something where this effect would make sense in a psychedelic sense, then this effect is super easy to pull off. It's literally drag and drop and you have just a few settings to, to mess with to create some really interesting looks. 8 is not really a VFX, but I wanted to include this because I think that any VFX person using After Effects for a while has been curious at some point to animate cartoons with it. Uh, maybe that's just me, but I decided to test this idea and create a short animated video that blends real drawings and sketches with some After Effects goodness. And this video is from five years ago, so you know, it's a little old and outdated, but it shows how by only using two repeating frames of the same drawing, you can create a hand-drawn jitter effect. Then by using the puppet tool for the limb animations, I was able to create walk cycles and other movements. It's not perfect. Again, this was from five years ago. I would probably do it completely differently now in actual 3D space, but you know, this was a cool experiment and it shows just what is possible with an After Effects, even for animation. Number nine is another personal favorite from way back in the day. This is still from seven years ago when I was, or maybe five, but I was just single and fed up with Valentine's Day. Not much has changed, but I, uh, I did this video. So yeah, even though it's pretty old and I remember how much of a struggle it was to get this done on the laptop that I had back in the day in 2012, it was a struggle, but the end effect was worth it. So what's going on here is the body of the car was separated from the wheels to fake a suspension animation. And then the body itself was distorted with, I believe it was like a liquify tool uh, upon impact. And that gets animated to kind of give it a crunched up look. And then blood, glass, and dust assets help tie in everything together. Now I'm kind of skimming over everything. It was very long process. I remember back in the day, especially with a really old laptop, it was such a struggle. Uh, but it, again, it was one of those challenges that was worth it in the end. And if you guys want to see the original video or, you know, the breakdown that I did five years ago, I'll link that as well. All right. Finally, at number 10, we got set extensions. I don't have time to edit stuff in here to show you what a set extension is, but um, even Star Wars used it to create a galaxy far, far away and create that whole world. And that's exactly what it can do for your stories. It can almost be boundless in a way that you can expand your reach and your imagination to different worlds and, and literally create. It's super fun to do. It's fun to make map paintings, but it's also fun to composite them into your footage and create just these crazy scenes. So definitely a big fan of these type of effects. Things to keep in mind here are similar to other VFX and that is to keep good references or sketches of what you want to aim for and, and to respect the rules that you set for yourself in your scene such as lighting or to try to keep consistent world elements or architecture based on what makes sense for the time and setting of your story. Using Photoshop of course helps to create the elements and, and then tracking them into 3D space later in After Effects is the way I like to do it. You know, you can already find the step-by-step -step tutorials as well as time lapses on my channel if you want to see more of this effect as far as matte painting it in Photoshop and bringing that into After Effects. And there you have it, 10 very easy, well, some, easy some maybe not so easy the effects that you can do right inside of after effects feel free to share any feedback in the description down below or if you have any vfx ideas that you want to throw in there or any questions just feel free to comment i'm here to answer them or you can get to me directly in my dms on instagram where i'm sharing a more personal journey every day if you want to support the channel check out the sponsor or take a look at the products i have on my website so check it out support the channel that way anyways i hope you enjoyed this video this breakdown these top 10 vfx i hope you found them useful and I hope you found them inspiring. And if you did, give this video a like and subscribe if this is your first time on this channel for more filmmaking and VFX videos. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Guar, and I will see you next time.